took the cake on this one, Mel. This one really takes the cake. Uh, look, Chuckles, don't do this to yourself, kid. Oh, I'm doing this to myself, am I? Chuckles, baby, listen. This is nothing poisonal. Nothing poisonal. This pandemic has taken a big, wet bite out of all of us. Myself included. You're an agent, Mel. Of course you'd include yourself. And being your agent was, in my opinion, absolutely magical. To have watched you blossom from that shy young boy I first saw light up the high school stage. Into the... Uh, permissible comedian and actor you have become today has truly been the highlight of my career. Thanks. But to everything there's a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant. And a time to pluck what is planted. A time to... And a time to laugh, Dagnabbit. I'm a comedian, Mel. The stage is all I know. What the heck am I supposed to do? What kind of a comedian puts out his first comedy special in the middle of a global pandemic full of jokes that he's never told before? It's simply reckless, Chuckles. Do you hear me? It's career suicide, Chuckles. And you'll only have yourself to blame. I will not stand idly by while you flush your talent down the tubes, Chuckles. I love you as if you were my own daughter, Chuckles. But I cannot and will not acquiesce to your cartoonist lunacy any further, Chuckles. Not now, not ever. You never loved me, Mel. You never loved me. All you ever cared about was turning a lousy buck and soft shoe into the okey doke. I love you, Chuckles, and you know it. Don't you see that this is my chance to do something for myself, Mel? A chance for us all to do something for ourselves. Caution and awareness are crucial, but this pandemic seems to have the world hypnotized. I won't live in this indefinite fear. I need to believe. Now, I could really use a familiar face going up against the odds on this, but I'm doing this comedy special, Mel, with or without your blessing. Then I wash my hands of you, Chuckles. I shall watch your future career with a considerable interest. Oh, fuck you, you little hoe. Did you just call me a hoe, Chuckles? Yeah, that's right, you little bitch-ass, trick-ass hoe. Is that one of your new bits for your little special, Chuckles? Knock-knock, who's there? Ho? Ho-who? How do you do? That's some grade-A material, pal. No, I'm just saying you're a little bitch-ass, trick-ass hoe, you little hoe. I found you in the gutter, Chuckles! And I leave you in the gutter, Chuckles! A even dirty tough guy! You're a waste of talent and a waste of space! I hope the special tanks! Have a nice life! Bite me!
Here's to five miserable goddamn, sorry God, goddamn years on the wagon into the absolute worst year and a half of my wretched life. Salute. COVID-19? You really fucked me on this one. <laughs> Ostrovia. on you just for telling a crummy joke in this day and age good I don't need their lousy rotten stinking approval anyway fuck they fuck Z fuck Z fuck Zo fuck them all I quit
Suitable for no actions. Suitable for no audiences. Um, scene 5A, take one. And now, it's your old chuckle buddy, Jonathan Ram Charan. I don't know that bitch. I hired her off of Fiverr. And a phenomenal voice talent she is, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, she's really something. I mean, you heard her, right? You know? Fantastic talent. You know, we couldn't have been happier to have her on board. And, you know, she's got a bright future ahead of her. Assuredly. Ladies and gentlemen, from the heart of downtown Toronto, Dundas Square, from me to you, let me just say, it is an absolute delight to be here with you this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Most certainly is. Yep, smell it in. Suck it in. Dundas Square, downtown Toronto. Certainly drums up a lot of memories for me, you know. I used to work as a newspaper boy, just down there yonder, handing out newspapers on the corner. Extra, extra, read all about it. Get your fucking newspaper, you know. But it was a great job, you know, as a young thespian, young stand-up comedian, young clown. You know, you could show up drunk, hungover, you know, but it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about the value of a hard-earned dollar, the value of a day's work, and, you know, perseverance, due diligence. Of course, I wound up getting fired from the job, but I didn't have to tell you that. Uh, just over there yonder, yay way that way, you know, I got, uh, you know, thrown out of a bar, you know. I was doing stand-up comedy at this fucking dive bar over there, you know. I'm on stage, I'm killing it. As much as you can kill in front of like one audience member. Anyways, you know, I was a little light on the bar tab, you know what I mean? Like, just a little light. Eight bucks, eight, eight measly bucks, seven, eight measly bucks. You know, I'm, I used to be like one of them jovial drunks. You know, just buying people drinks and shit like an idiot. So anyways, they grab me by the scruff, fling me out on the curb, you know? I remember picking myself off the ground, right? I'm like, ah, ah. Ah, you treat a Canadian artist? I don't deserve this. Well, look at me now. Yay way that away. Just right over there. I used to work as a janitor. You know? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I used to be a janitor. I'm talking mop buckets, slot buckets, toilets, tampons, urinals, urinal cakes, parking garages. Bin, bag, broom, the whole kit and caboodle, folks. You name it, I cleaned it, you know? I pushed a little mop bucket. <laughs> dipped the mop in the mop water. <laughs> you know, I'm mopping floors. <laughs> mopping floors and, you know, washing windows. <laughs> you know? Pushing a garbage trolley. <laughs> you know? God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. God made dirt, dirt, bust your ass. I was a motherfucking janitor, essential worker. You know? So Dundas Square, certainly drumming up a lot of memories, folks, you know? So certainly delighted to be here with you this evening. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this whole pandemic situation, you know? Vaccinations. Quarantine. You know, quarantine's got me sick of my neighborhood, you know? I hate it. Walking around the same old radius for the past year and a half. It's to the point where I catch myself rolling my eyes at landmarks, you know? This stupid old tree again. How many times have I got to walk past this dumb old tree? You know? There's this tree in my neighborhood. He doesn't like me. I don't like him. It's a long story. Well, not really. There's this tree in my neighborhood, right? Real prick. And his branches always like extend over to the sidewalk, his or her, or it or zit, or I don't know if a tree has a gender or not. But anyways, the tree, the branches are always extending over the sidewalk. So every time you walk by, you're getting twigs and caterpillars and leaves in your hair. It's driving me nuts, you know? Well, the other day, check this out. I'm walking by, a little gusty, a little windy, the branch swoops down, snatches my mask clean off my face. Oh my God, give me that back, give me that back. I'm jumping up and down trying to grab my mask back. Give me that back, give me that back. Fucking buses, you know? Tree stealing my fucking mask. 
They're not going to let me into H&M without my mask on. Who would I be then? You know? You know? Yep. Soaking it in. Desolate sidewalk street. A lot of times comedians open their sets or specials with like airplane jokes, like travel jokes. I'm not quite on that level yet, you know what I mean? I'm like one of them two feet in a heartbeat type of comic, hoofing it from gig to gig, shuffling around, you know? Um, you know, but I, you know, took a lot of buses, Greyhound buses, um, you know, uh, if you don't pay attention, they don't see you. Um, you know, took a lot of buses from gig to gig, you know, RIP, Greyhound bus, you know, another victim of the coronavirus economic downslide. They're out of business. 99 years, Greyhound bus, something like that, you know. A century shuffling drug addicts from town to town. Now they're out of business. Anyway, I was on my way to some hell gig taking a Greyhound bus. And, you know, I'm on the bus. You know, the bus driver gets on the intercom. <laughs> Attention all passengers, there will be, um, no smoking aboard the coach and no drinking. This little girl's like, did you hear that, mommy? No drinking. <laughs> did you hear that, mommy? No drinking. Thank you, coronavirus. I'm going to be just like mommy when I grow up. I'm never going back to school. You know? Drunk mothers on Greyhound buses, you know, going from hell gig to hell gig. I remember one time I was on my way to some other gig. I almost got in a fight with a Mennonite. You know, like those Amish paradise looking weirdos and some stupid bowler hats and them scruffy, scraggly Amish paradise beards. Well, anyway, I got the window seat, right? I'm going over my notes for the show and, um, you know, having a coffee. This Mennonite presses up on me. Excuse me there. My name's Brother Jebediah. Do you mind switching me seats? That way me and my wife can sit together. I was like, look, Jeb, it's a matter of comfort. You want to be comfortable sitting next to your wife. I want to be comfortable sitting next to the window. I was here first. Fuck off. Well, Jeb didn't take quite kindly to that. He's just staring at me. You know, have you ever been stared at by a Mennonite? Real menacing with that beard and stuff. We had a little layover at an A&W. Boom, 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 boom. You know that A&W root beer bear? Anyways, we stop over at an A&W, the Greyhound bus. You know, I'm eating a Papa burger. I got a Mennonite staring at me from across a parking lot. You know, I'm telling you, it was really menacing. So, anyway. Taking Greyhound buses from shit gig to shit gig. Not flying anywhere anytime soon, you know? A politician gets caught blatantly disregarding COVID-19 travel lockdown restrictions. <gasps> A reporter approaches him. Excuse me, sir. You're in full breach of COVID-19 lockdown. What do you have to say to your constituents? Politicians like, but I paid for it out of my own pocket this time. I swear it. I swear it. You know? Politicians still restricted for travel, even if they pay for it out of their own pocket? <laughs> Remember when those pricks did that to us? Even on Christmas. You assholes stay home. We're going to the Bahamas. Getting our dick sucked. That's a politician for you. But they're leading the charge in these times, aren't they? Don't you feel safe watching them from a, you know, safe distance? In the comfort of your own home and squirreled away for months, year and a half now? Politicians are always saying things like, we're gonna follow the science. Well, what if the science jumped off a bridge? Would you follow it? Probably. Six feet distance apart, everyone. Social distancing. All right. Triple mask on. Gloved up. All right. On the count of three. Three, two, one. Science. Ah! Jumping to our deaths in the name of science. Ah! Leaping to our death. Leaping to our deaths in the name of science. You know?
a lot of conflicting, you know, diagnoses too, with this whole thing. You know, you don't know what to believe. The information's always changing. You know, a nurse gets caught emptying a bedpan during COVID-19. A patient sits up in bed. Uh, uh. Nurse, nurse, how come you're not wearing a mask? Nurse goes, well, according to the latest statistics, a healthy amount of fecal inhalation proves useful in fighting off COVID-19 infection. Patient goes, inhale it, ingest it, invest it for all I care. At least let me wipe first. A COVID vaccination site opens kitty corner to an abortion clinic. A woman exits from each clinic at the same time. A protester out on the curb shouts out, kitty killer, kitty killer, before the abortionist can drop the coat hanger to respond. The COVID vaxxer shouts out, hey, the medical term is assisted suicide, okay? Follow the science, asshole. Yeah. Garbage truck, garbage duty going on, you know? So, you know, there's this little monkey, right? He's been working hard all day, you know? Swinging from vines at the zoo, beating his chest. You know? Cheesing for the customers, you know? You know? Finally, it's his break time. Figures go down to the cafeteria, get himself a banana, right? So he goes down to the cafeteria, in the fridge, looking for a banana. A progressive young woman walks up to the cage. Excuse me, Mr. Monkey, if that's what you identify as. Do I have your permission to take your picture? Mr. Monkey goes, Now look, bitch! Can't you see that I'm eating a banana? Now beat it! The young woman goes, Oh my god, I never identified as being so triggered in my life. She goes and gets the zookeeper. Zookeeper comes back, Mr. Monkey. I will not tolerate that type of toxic behavior towards women in my zoo. Is that any type of way to treat a woman? Mr. Monkey grabs a handful of shit, <coughs> flings it in the woman's face. <coughs> Zookeeper goes, well, that's more like it. That's how monkeys behave, you know, throwing shit. I mean, doing what I can here, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't exactly been, you know, out and about during these times, you know? So anyways, you know, Patches and Jeff, right? They're sitting on the porch, you know? Jeff is scratching Patches' his head, you know, and Patches turns to Jeff. Hey. Now look, Jeff, I've been a good dog to you, haven't I? Jeff goes, oh, yes, Patches, you have. Hey. Fetched when you told me to fetch, stayed when you told me to stay, sat when you told me to sit. Now I got a favor to ask you, buddy. Hey. I got a sister in Wuhan province. Hey. She just had a litter of puppies, you know? Jeff, you gotta get her out of there. Have her shipped over here in the kennel for me, would ya? Jeff goes, yeah, Patches, we could do that. We can have her shipped over here, but you know, she's gonna have to follow COVID-19 safety protocol. She's gonna have to get vaccinated. You know, she's gonna have to quarantine for three to seven weeks. Masks, gloves, vax shots, the whole kit and caboodle. Patches goes, Jeff, I can't ask her to do that. I mean, it's 2021, she's a, Independent woman, Arf. capable of doing anything just as good as any man. Arf. Can't ask her to quarantine. Arf. Jeff goes, well, that's a bitch for you. Yep, that's a job, all right. I want that fucking job. Enough of these fucking dick jokes and shit jokes. You know, I want to drive around collecting garbage. You know, you know that guy's going to be... Um, <laughs> You know, employed indefinitely. There'll be garbage to collect and all sorts of shit to do, but you know, live entertainment, you know, your basic civil liberties, 
you know, those are going right down the tubes. But you can always get a job collecting garbage. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's a fucking beauty job. That guy's probably making like 30 bucks an hour. You know what I mean? But anyway, fuck. You know? A little bit of limbo. I think we're really fucking his uh, day up, right? He's like... He's, he's like some shit to do over here. Something. God bless the garbage man. Anyway, what a sweetheart. Um, you know. I don't know how much longer I can go on pretending that I'm not staring at women when I am staring at women. You know what I mean? I mean, they know anyways, you know? Maybe it's like female intuition, or maybe it's my tendency to just, you know, move my head and not my eyes. You know, like I, I just move my head and per, not my eyes when I'm looking at a woman. I'm like, oh yeah, hey, yeah. Nice Pomeranian, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not staring at your tits, your tits, your tits, your God said and heavenly scented tits, no. I stare at dudes too, you know. They're not as pleasant, but you know what I mean? Sometimes I stare at guys, you know, just for like, you know, borderline admiration, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, that guy looks like he knows the answer to how to make a pussy spurt like suffering fuck a taff, you know? <coughs> You know, chin up, you know, shoulders back, you know, strut around like it's fashion week on GHB. Yeah, I'm high on drugs at fashion week, you know. You ever notice dudes are in really great shape too? They're always playing with their pecs. Oh, these pecs. Oh, you know, what a burden. Sometimes I'd be staring at men. And all of a sudden, I'm like, yeah, I'm learning something. I'm learning something. Oh. oh, hey, how's it going, buddy? Oh, you know, I'm just staring at you. You know, just one dude staring at another dude. Just dudes staring at dudes. I'm not bothering you, am I? You know, feminism has really sucked the joy out of oogling. You know? It's actually to the point where it's like, I appreciate a woman for who she is rather than what she looks like. That's if I appreciate at all. I wasn't raised that way. What in the fuck is this Dr. Seuss, Mother Goose, Cat in the Hat fucking, not one of them fucking Cat in the Hat mobiles buzzing around here? I don't know what's going on. Are we fucking up his work cycle? Anyway. You know, as a modern man, and I say that loosely, you know what I mean? I find that I'm not as corny as I shoulda, woulda, coulda been. You know, just too much uh, back and forth between men and women these days, you know? Driving me nuts. Type of shit that makes you sick to your stomach, really. You know what I mean? I mean, and I don't want to split hairs with you ladies over this, you know? But I'd rather be, like, objectified any old day of the week than vilified. You're like a villain for packing a dick these days, man. I just be like walking down the street, beautiful morning, I'll just kind of casually turn my head to look. I'll see a woman on the other side of the street, eh, snaps her head, eh, mm, mm. eyes narrowing with disgust. Mm. I wasn't looking at you, I was looking at the sunrise. Can't I just enjoy a sunrise without that creeping, searching female judgment? You know, no wonder I quit masturbating. Or maybe it's the soy, you know? Been drinking a lot of soy, soy boy, which is a delicious dairy-free alternative for any decaffeinated, pussified beverage. Soy. So I don't know, it's a culmination of things, you know what I mean? But it's like, sometimes I see these women when they snap their heads in judgment, and it's like, I don't want you. What's so great about you? Whatever it is, that irreplaceable value to which you obviously align yourself, I say the opposite. I don't want it. Breaking hearts. As you can tell. Um, what else here? You know? People think I'm slow. They really do. Sometimes I could see it in their eyes, you know? They'll 
They'll just be talking to me. And so, uh, Jonathan, we're gonna tell you something. Blah, blah, blah. And I'll see like their eyes fall as they wrestle with their inner conflict. Oh, oh my God, is, is he slow? I think he's slow. He's just staring at me with an open mouthed trance. Yeah, that's it. I'm slow. I'm slow because you must be fascinating, right? Or maybe it's the opposite. And from my opinion, it definitely is. The thought that you would just walk up on me and hold me spellbound. You know what I mean? This quarantine gets you a lot of time to think. Think over the injustices of your social interactions. I love this social distancing. Keep it coming. <laughs> yep. Uh, giving it all up to start my own garbage truck business. That is a money maker. Oh no, that's a bus. A lot of idling uh, motors and whatnot. Kind of like what I'm doing here, you know. By the way, is death worth dying for? I mean, you know, it's like they're always saying, you know, find something that you love that's worth dying for. This is the hill that I die upon. It's like, I mean, death is pretty much the only thing I can come up with. I mean, what would you die for? Mm, I don't know. Death. And one should never be afraid to die, you know? Old people do it all the time, and let's face it, they can't do anything. You know, you ever see an old person stepping off of a bus? Grandpa versus a jar of pickles, who's going to win? Vaccinations? <laughs> yep. Those are the real heroes, ladies and gentlemen. Food deliveries. Logistics. All day and all night. Getting your food straight to your fat gullet, 24-7. Convenient too, in quarantine, you may never have to leave the house again. You know, perfect. <laughs> yep. It's always nice to have the smell of wafting garbage when you're trying to formulate a joke. You know, oh by the way, um, you know, as you mentioned, or at least as I mentioned, you can see I'm quite the charmer. When it comes to like dating a woman, I'd prefer if her family's dead. Like all of them, every single one of them, you know, like her mother, father, sister, brother, cat, dog, uncle, parakeet, dead. Every last one of them. Or else it's like unfair to me, you know, like I don't want to date your family, you know. I reciprocate. I don't, you know, I don't come with no extra baggage, you know. No, I have no friends. No, I have no family. No, there's nothing wrong with it. And you'll thank me on Christmas. You know, that's what I bring to a relationship. I'm not saying people don't understand me, but like if it ever turned out that I was dating a robot, most people's responses would probably be something like, good for you, good for him. Jonathan dating a robot? Yeah, good for him. You know, somebody for someone. What I was saying is, you know what I mean? By the way, you're not spiritual just because you sit on the grass. Of all the openness and insight I hope to attain in my lifetime, sitting on the grass is an area that I'm 100% okay with, you know? Do you have any idea how much happier I am sitting on a bench as opposed to mucking it about down there on the grass? There's ants and dog shit down there. Furthermore, you know, just because you're sitting powwow style next to some cigarette butts, doesn't mean that your soul is that much more entwined with the universe. The average person is a complete scumbag, you know? Live, laugh, love, living your best life. Live your truth, drop dead. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with me anyways with this whole quarantine situation, you know? Just different thoughts come to mind, that's all. I wouldn't particularly put too much, uh, you know, weight upon these uh, topics. You know, what does this one say here? Skippity doo wop, skippity day. 
Jesus is going to return in the form of an app. Mark my words. Wouldn't that be dope, you know? Installing Jesus Up app. A convenient way to repent. He does exist. We treat social media and cell phones like God anyway, don't we? Oh, your tube! You tube! You tube has come down from the mountain and told me what I can't and cannot say online. Your tube! The omnipotence of a fucking video sharing site. Ah. Which I love. You ever forget? You ever swear, rather, not to bring your phone in the crapper? Then you find yourself hovering with your undies round, wrapped around your ankles, with an unwiped ass as you scooch over the couch. What were you thinking? Snatch up your phone with contempt? Scuttle back to the toilet? You catch your own eye in the mirror? Looks like I was going to be a little bit longer than expected, Bo. Can you have a favorite face tattoo? By default, they would all have to be your favorite. They're on your face! Which cluster of tattoo? No, this one. No, that one. No, this one. This face tattoo is the one that makes me forget who I am the most. I just love it. Look in the mirror, can't even recognize myself. Isn't that like a major insult to your parents? You look just like your father getting a face tattoo. How can they ask us to wear a mask at the bank? What's next? Pants off at all playgrounds, please. Pants off at all playgrounds. We'll be anal swabbing for COVID-19 by the monkey bars. Six feet apart, everyone. Your legs, that is. You know, stretch those legs six feet apart, anal swab ya. Swab the deck. Yeah. You know, these masks that we've been wearing last year and a half, we're yanking on my ears, you know, just chafing, just yanking. How come they never talk about that on the news? You know, like, what's the fallout from all these masks that we got just yanking on your ears, just chafing my ears? You know what I mean? By the time this is all said and done, I'm going to have to get a double ear erectomy. My ears have grown three sizes during pandemic. You know, I'll be able to wrap my ears around my lips, use it as a mask. Oh, look at your ears. Are you a mixed martial artist? A wrestler? No, just some COVID sissy, you know. But hey, you know, it's for the children, it's for the grandparents, it's for the government, it's for God. Masks indefinitely. You should wish you were never born unless you were wearing a mask. Right? There's a lot of sayings going around during this time as well, right? You know? For example, there's a lot to unpack. During this time of pandemic, there's a lot to unpack. The information is vast, and there's a lot to unpack. Talking like a disenchanted vice principal is just not the way to go. Didn't you ever want to be cool? Just pack it up your ass. Or how about this one? You know? Well, let's just walk that back. You know, I'm just so, uh... I am just so responsible with my thoughts and actions that I have to walk it back. You know, whenever I say something, I'll just walk it back. You walk me anywhere, boy. You ain't walking back, you know? Hey, what happened to that pundit that you went into the woods with? I don't know, he, uh, he walked off somewhere. Sorry, folks, um, you know, all the glitz and glam of shooting on a busy downtown, well, not busy, but downtown sidewalk. You got drug addicts wandering around as if something's going on here that they must see and be a part of just to gain attention for no apparent reason. People are very strange that way. So two police officers are having a picnic, right? They're bike cops and fuck it. You know, it's a beautiful day. All these bike cops are having a picnic. 
one cop turns to the other one. Hey there, partner. Do you mind uh, throwing that in the garbage for me? Uh, you know, I just sanitize my hands. The other cop goes, no problem, pal. Takes it out. Here's a specimen right here. Uh, no, sir. No. Take care now. Yes. Yeah. This is, um, you know, what uh, I guess pandemic leads to in a sense. You know, a lot of um, stuff. So. Yeah. So anyway. Sometimes if you just um, pretend like nothing's happening, they don't see you. By the way, I don't feel sorry for that person at all. You know what the thing is? They see that you're doing something and they want to come interrupt it because you got some light going on. And that's what's going on with this whole pandemic. People trying to snuff people out get in each other's business, hold each other down. There's no reason why that guy's doing that. He's a young guy. Scuffling, snuffling about, begging like a retard. Fuck him. Not, don't feel sorry for him in the least. All right, now check this out. There's these two police officers. They're cycle cops. They're on bike. They're having a picnic. Fuck it, it's a beautiful day. And they're people too, you know. So anyways, these two cops are settled down having a picnic. One cop turns to the other and goes, hey there, uh, partner. Do you mind uh, throwing this in the trash for me? I just sanitized my hands. Partner goes, no problem, 10-4, good buddy. Throws the shit in the garbage for him. Cop turns to his pal again and goes, hey there, partner. Be a doll and uh, zipping my fly up for me, would you? You know? I just sanitize my hands and, you know, affirmative. His buddy zips his fly up for him. Zip. Cop turns to his partner again and goes, say, uh, partner, do you mind? And do I mind what? The car races behind me. And do you mind me doing what? What, you want me to shoot a unarmed black teenager for you too? While I'm at it, huh? Cop goes, hey, well, no, I mean, I gotta earn my paycheck somehow. People want your time, money, attention. No suffering. Wag one with the pain. Strain. Drain. They buffering. See, spoken word is some emotional shit. And honestly, comedically, it's gay as tits. Now, I hadn't written a poem in a minute since the last Jezebel jinxed my heart. I haven't quite fixed it. Still, if y'all will chill, relax, Reopen, pull down your pants, and allow me to linguistically, rhythmically, spiritually, and literally tap that ass. Folks, I shall spin you a yawn that shall do you no harm. Just some cameras, my black ass, and a microphone. 
No need for alarm. Who really cares? Black lives matter? Beaten black and blue by them blue lives, them black lives, they all lies. What matters in this world? Blue, black, green. Ka-ching! Even though I'm a Canadian, that's more of a American monetary reference thing. Who really cares? Politicians? Politics? More like poly dicks. That means multiple penises, you pundit pricks. And pussies. Whoopsie! Who really cares? Intellectuals? Academia? That's a comfy job. Read and write bull crap and play with your knob? Put me in coach, put me in coach, I can pitch. Making up statistics and deadly shit. Who really cares? Your family? Friends? Relationships? Don't make me sick. Now you could eat my whole asshole. From stem to sternum. Because I don't know if I've ever been or known someone worth knowing. Burn them. We live in a world of cynicism motivated by self-interest. So we can post it to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Who really cares about Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter. Blue Lives Matter. Blue Lives Matter. Feminism. Feminists. Gay rights. Gay sprites. Just a rhyme, not a hate crime. Proud boys. Proud boy. Z. See the trend? Knock it off with the hugs and kisses. Social reform. Don't pretend. Oh, in this pandemic? Restricted societies held hostage in mass cuffs. Vax ports to nowhere, but democracy? Mm, nah. The powers that be, boy, they be planning to keep us muzzled asthmatic mole people indoors who spawn like salmon. They cause conflict to reject God and what's universally true. Do unto others as you will have done unto you. So there's this cop on horseback. He trots up to a Black Lives Matter protest. <coughs> cop goes, that reminds me. I need to pick up some chicken for dinner. Wait here, Teddy. So he ties Teddy up to the lamppost, <coughs> runs into the grocery store. When he comes back out, you know, he's got his groceries. He's looking for Teddy. There's Teddy protesting with Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Cop goes, well, I've seen some horse shit in my day, but this is ridiculous. Teddy, how could you? Teddy goes, well, when you're hung like us, all they want to do is ride you. <laughs> Poetic license, trust me. All right? Like I tell all my women. I'm nothing to cough at, but then again, I'm nothing to choke on, neither. And if we're honest, I think that's what we both want. <laughs> so Jeff wakes up one morning, right? Wakes up one morning. Poor Jeff. He's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. COVID-19, right? He gets up, gets himself into his clothes, Goes and gets patches. <coughs> takes him for a walk. It's the middle of winter. So they're outside trotting around. Jeff's just like absent-minded. He accidentally steps on Patch's tail. <coughs> Jeff goes, oh, sorry, Patches. This whole pandemic, COVID-19, it's, it's just got me a little uptight. Patches goes, uptight? Try taking a shit in the middle of February with the whole neighborhood looking at you. You want to talk to me about uptight? I wouldn't mind getting shit on by a pigeon lately. Seeing how this whole thing's going, 
you know, pandemic and all. That's like the recovery plan for most governments, you know? Buy a lottery ticket, you know? It's good luck to get shit on by a pigeon. It's the COVID-19 recovery fund. <laughs> Isn't that dumbfounding? How, like, during this whole time, as trying as it may seem, some people can complain about the same things that you're dealing with. It's like, wow. My family, my finances, my friends, my this, my that. You, I got the same problems going on. Wow. I've literally found dumb. I'm dumbfounded. As if, I guess maybe I should relate to you. <laughs> All right, maybe I should have some empathy. Okay, touche. It's hard to know whether to love or loathe the careless noise of the average person. Sure, the jingle of a keychain may ring like the bells of freedom, but it's that same aloofness that gets you eaten in the wild. Can't I just punch you in the balls and call it even? A drug addict was patient with me the other day. Can you believe that? I'm at Tim Hortons. I'm getting a coffee. I'm kind of like absent-minded. I'm fuddling around with like the ATM machine. And all of a sudden I hear, uh, 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 like creeping up behind me. I'm like, oh God, right? This like, I don't know, he was like a fentanyl patient. Just like comes creeping up to me. Uh, no, what you want to do is hold the card this way that it was like it's like this guy even have a bank account like he was patient with me when is anybody patient let alone a drug addict you know it was odd here's what i don't get about homeless people though you know what i mean i mean they got a lot of skills and i've been homeless no big deal don't cry about it so here's the thing about homeless people they have a lot of skills right they know how to camp they can pitch a tent, set up a camp, insulate, you know, sleeping bag, campfire, the whole kit and caboodle. They have the skill to camp. So how come they don't understand that they're not camping? You're not camping. You're squatting. You're living on the sidewalk. This is not camping. I don't care if there's a tent. Though it is, you know, pretty inventive, you know. I guess it kind of makes sense in some person's world. Never made sense to me when I was out there. Anyway. Ah, the squawk of the Canadian seagull, you know. That's a nice uh, sound first thing in the morning, nursing a hangover, right? You degenerates, you know. But, you know, I hate to rip on the poor. I came up poor. I'm probably still technically poor. So coming from a poor person, let me tell you, poor people are pretty insufferable. It's not just the rich. We need to tax these billionaires, you know? We need to get them to pull their companies out of our country. Does that make any sense? You want to tax these billionaires to the point in which they take their business elsewhere? Does that make any sense? Well, I guess to a poor person, maybe. No, you have to earn your money, earn your living. All right? Poor people are pure insufferable. Only in, like, a poor neighborhood can you open your window and get blasted with the stench of cigarette smoke. <coughs> How the fuck am I getting cigarette smoke in my face when I open the window. I want fresh air. Euthanize these poor people. I'm sorry. I'm poor too. Get over it. Everybody's poor. <laughs> Thank you, COVID. <laughs> what else here? Oh, by the way, conservatives are like, fuck you. Liberals are like, we love to fuck you. Think about it. Casual sex? Have you ever had it? Casual sex is 50% one's own ego. 
I'm somebody. I'm somebody. You know, oh, this girl, she's just, she keeps calling me. You know, it's like everyone always has to let other people know about their prowess. Oh, you know, this girl wants me. She needs me. Oh, this guy, he's so into me. <laughs> Telling their friends as if anybody gives a fuck. 50% one's own ego. Casual sex. 40% trying to appease the other person's ego. Yes, yes, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Yes, you're beautiful. I love you. Whatever you say. Let me be your little bitch. Okay, yes. 10% is the actual sex act. <laughs> However long that lasts, you know? Pure ego, pure pointlessness. Casual sex. But hey, let it consume your life. <laughs> um, hey, check this out. You're in bed. You got pornography on your laptop. You're ordering a pizza on your cell phone. That's a threesome, right? Please? Lord, bless me with a basic bitch. Give me a basic bitch. That's what I want. One of them basic, like, rudimentary types, you know? Dumb as shit, but faithful. Lord, bless me with a basic bitch. Because, like, I'm a basic bozo kind of guy. Just a stupid, dummy, dildo, dunderhead, dumb fuck, you know? I don't want to come home from a hard day of telling jokes to seagulls down by the lake and, you know, fucking... I come home, she's wearing my pants, reading my newspaper, you know? Sitting in my chair. Lord, bless me with a basic bitch. And not a baddest bitch. You know, I don't want none of them, like, Instagram hussies. How do these people fall for those types, you know? Them duck-lipped, fake-ass, like, mental patients, you know, suck you dry. Who the hell would want one of them, you know? They literally scare me. Lord, bless me with the basic bitch, please. On a more serious note, I'd like to speak to you all about something that's very much affecting all of us in our society. Critical race theory. I personally think CRT, critical race theory, has no place in a progressive society, you know, to tell one culture that they are responsible for the tragedies of another culture indefinitely throughout time. One culture is inherently evil over another. Intersectionality holding back one group of people over another. It just doesn't have place in a progressive society. Just don't tell white people. Whatever you do, don't tell white people. Let them sweat. <laughs> Let them feel the way I feel when I walk into Ikea. I'm a paying customer, you know. I want a white child's first day of school to feel like the last judgment, you know? Jesus Christ has come to judge your soul, young boy. I don't give a fuck if you like Lego or not. You're born evil, you'll die evil, because your grandfather might have been evil. Who really knows? Asshole was just being a farmer. Isn't that what farmers do? Kill everything in sight? Maybe that's the farm I grew up on, I don't know. But you know, people are getting along. Getting better and stuff. I think so. How the hell would I know? I've been indoors in quarantine for the last year and a half. That's normal. But you know, we're... People are kind of, you know, getting along. I got this one friend, you know, real sweet girl, really sweet person, you know. She's a white lady, pal of mine, and, you know, one of them dreamer types, just full of grace. Whimsically a moron, really, you know. She comes up to me, you know, a little while back. She goes, Jonathan, you want to come to my Gatsby party? What's a Gatsby party? Well, it's a party where you come dressed in the regalia of the 1920s. Jazz. High society. Come to my Gatsby party. I'm a disgruntled black man. What the fuck am I going to wear to your 1920s Gatsby party? Show up tarred and feathered. Ding dong. Brought Tostitos. <laughs> Suffice to say I didn't go. But, uh, you know. Sounded like fun. Anyway. Do you ever feel like sometimes like you're living in the past? 
It's like you're trying to like return to a past that wasn't particularly good. It's like you're trying to return to something that never was. Bring on the vaccinations, you know? Fuck it. No past, no future, no nothing. Shoot me up. I'll be your little experimental guinea pig. When you look at it from that angle, I guess it does make sense. Nothing means anything. You ever notice gas? Gas that you get in quarantine? I gets the gas in quarantine, boy. Anything gives you gas in quarantine. All that's sitting on your ass. I was like sitting on the couch, doing nothing all day. I get up, I had two grapes. All of a sudden, blew the asshole right out. I mean, poetry's poetry, you all right? Search in your heart. Question. How long will COVID-19 be in the societal psyche? Answer. Well, about as long as the Spanish flu, I would imagine, seeing how that was on the tip of your lips before this horse shit. The Spanish flu? What the f- Never thought of that once. What is the Spanish flu? The bulls, f- matadors fucking bulls or something? You know? My name is Amico Montoya. You fucked my bull. Prepare to die. My name is Amika Matoya. You fucked my bull. Prepare to die. Guide my syringe, father. Guide my syringe. Well, I'm only doing what I can, folks. I mean, come on here. I am proud of the fact that I've been able to resist Googling things, though, during this whole pandemic. Every dildo is just fucking keyboard happy googling every little statistic or whatever if john's hopkins society didn't say it then it didn't mean anything it's like john hopkins hopskin hopscotch you know why don't you john why don't you john hop this buddy fuck off with that fake fucking news (laughs) you know And here's another thing. I'm sick of vaccines for things I don't care about, you know? Give me a vaccine for something I actually care about. Like if they came up with a vaccine for teeth brushing, sign me up. I don't care what it did to me, you know? Sure, like if you don't get vaccinated from COVID, it might kill you, but like no more brushing my teeth on the toilet in my life, you know? Saving time, saving money, winning. So check this out. There's this couple, right? They're all masked up, gloved up, walking down the street, fighting off the relentless spread of COVID-19. Then the unthinkable, an unmasked assailant steps out of the shadows. (gasps) The boyfriend steps forward gallantly to protect the little woman from the relentless spread of COVID. I'll save you, honey. (laughs) Girlfriend looks at the boyfriend and goes, But honey, we're both still Chinese. That was a Wuhan joke. And um, after what they put us through, I think we can at least laugh a little bit about it. Calm down, Jackie Chan, you know I fucking love you. I wanted to be him when I was a kid anyways, you know? Rumble in the Bronx, Rush Hour 2. Or is he from Hong Kong? Eh, same shit, whatever. Um. I really don't miss sex, you know, when I see like these couples stomping around in argumentative forms during uh, COVID. You know, you could tell they've been pent up in their little fucking duplexes and they go for a little walk to stretch their legs and take a break from the nitpicking. One of them stomping on a head in an angry display of, you know, mental retardation. The other one's like lollygagging behind. No, I marched to the beat of my own drum. I'm like not a marriage counselor, but I would say first one home gets to keep the house. On your mark, get set, go. Second place gets to keep the kids. Just a thought. Or you could get a divorce, the old fashioned way, I guess. Or like the new norm, really. So check this out. A couple are arguing in quarantine. 
Finally, it boils to a head. They've had it, right? Husband took. Husband looks at the wife. Now look here, you spoiled little femme brat. One more peep out of you, I'm gonna kill you. Wife goes, oh yeah? Well, you'll never get away with it. Husband goes, oh yeah? Once the autopsy reveals that bat-like pussy of yours can't be deemed anything other than COVID-19 related. Open and shut case. But what about the stab marks, the gunshot wounds, the bludgeoning to the head? Nope, the bat pussy. It obviously is COVID-19. We don't conflate information. This is the truth. You know how stupid you have to be to get pushed in front of a train? You know, people are still getting pushed in front of trains during COVID with social distancing and the whole kit and caboodle. You know, COVID, no COVID, post COVID, post pandemic, whatever the fucking want to slice it, you can't stand directly behind me. You know, I get in trouble at Dollarama all the time. You know, I'll be standing there in line. What in the fuck is your problem? Customers like, what, 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 what? I'm next in line. I'm next in line. No matter how closely you squeeze next to me, you're not gonna symbioticize to come through me and emerge the next person in the lineup. Back off! Of course, I don't actually say that. I'm a sheep like everyone, you know? Just give me a vaccination and maybe um, I'll learn to live with it, you know? People breathing down my fucking neck. Don't worry, the future's bright. Oh, by the way, um, you know, the gift of a beautiful day is the beautiful day, in case you didn't know that. Not some child-minded egotist who thinks they're doing me a favor by like blaring muffled music on their cell phone speaker, you know? Bringing the fun, portable speakers. That's why I never could deal with a portable speaker. Like the idea of bringing fun to a situation. It's like a picnic, you know? I'm gonna bring the fucking mashed potatoes, potato salad, corn on the cob. What do you want me to bring? I'll bring the fun. <laughs> Portable speakers. Too much fun. Push, Peloton, push! Your country needs you, Peloton! The world needs you, push! Ride your virtual bicycles, ladies and gentlemen, ride! Ride for the fight against COVID-19, the coronavirus! Gymnasiums are closing! Movie theaters are closing! Rub and tugs are closing! You are only recourse for recreation, Peloton! Will you not answer the cry? Lead us to that promised post-pandemic paradise, Peloton. You and your kind are our only hope. Nordic track, Eshlon, Bowflex, will you answer the call? We must fight reality with virtual reality. It's the only way forward. Follow the science, sons and daughters, transgendered in-betweens. Follow the science, it's very clear. We must fight reality with virtual reality. Planet Earth, please be reasonable. Zoom, Skype, OnlyFans. The call to action is upon you. So what if we wither away in atrophy or expand to a globular mass of jelly from inactivity? It's for the children. It's for the grandparents. It's for the government. It's for God. 
The power of Peloton compels you, ladies and gentlemen. Stay indoors. Lock that door and throw away the key. Never step foot within another human being ever again, people, please. I beseech you. Your government needs you. Do you remember learning in school about the Dirty Thirties, the Great Depression? Me neither, but I do kind of recall seeing from that time photographs. Sweaty, skinny, dusty cowboys and cowwomen with handkerchiefs tied around their necks or maybe peeking out of their pockets. I remember thinking, handkerchiefs? Who the fuck wears or uses a handkerchief? Hankies? I mean, look at these retards. No wonder they're starving to death. A handkerchief? A handkerchief was a nasty thing your grandfather would have in his pocket. He would pull it out to wipe the beads of sweat from his lips and forehead after forcing you to sit on his lap for a quarter of an hour. A handkerchief. And now, it's my everyday look. Huh.